Chuck Arfine. Welcome to the White Sox Talk Podcast, brought to you by Wind Trust here at Guaranteed Rate Field and on the podcast today. It's a conversation with Elvis Andrews. And after the month the White Sox had, he was really the one guy, the one guy I wanted to speak to because he is really like the nerve center of this clubhouse. He has been through this kind of season before. In fact, in 2015, his Texas Rangers got off to a very similar start. They ended up winning the division and won 88 games in the process. So I talked to him about that, what is going on in this clubhouse, how they're starting to turn things around. His conversation with Luis Robert after Luis Robert suffered that hamstring injury. And have you noticed the home run jacket and fedora that is uh, now being used in the dugout after home runs. Well, Elvis played a big part in that, and uh, we talk about that and a whole lot more. Uh, This is a fun, motivating, and even healing conversation with Elvis Andrews. It is coming your way next. All right, Elvis Andrews, I guess I want to start with this. What gives you hope? Where is the belief Why do you believe in this team turning this around and making this season into something after the start you guys had? Uh, Because of the group that we have here, man. Uh, We have a tremendous, talented team from top to bottom. Uh, It's just baseball the way we start the season the first month, but, you know, it's a lot of games left. It's a long way to go, and, you know, I do believe, man, in everything that i play played my whole career, I always believe it. You know, you have to have that belief in yourself that you can make it no matter how you start. So it's how you finish, not how you start. So and, and I just there's something special in this team, man. Everybody's hungry and we want to win. So well, when the losing streak was going on, where was where was the hunger? How did you see it happening, even though you were losing? Yeah, no, you start always to focus on uh, the positive things. Uh, even when you're going bad, there's always something positive that, that the team is doing. And, and you, you stick to those and. You know, I feel like the negative part, you just, you know, you learn from it and you start the page. You have to have short memory in baseball. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest uh, key any team can have. Have short memory, be able to turn the page and prepare for the next one. So I go back to your 2015 Texas Rangers team. And you guys experienced a very similar start to your season. I got the numbers here. On May 3rd, you were 8-16. and 16. You were nine and a half games out. You hadn't won back-to-back games. You hadn't won a series. You guys had Beltre, Cecil Fielder, or no, sorry, Prince Fielder. Prince. Prince Fielder, not his dad. <laughs> uh, Hansel Alberto, Joey Gallo were on the, that team. They were rookies. What was the feeling then? Because you guys were expected to do much, and you came off out of the gate struggling like this. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we have a really good, like you mentioned, you know, have, when you have Adrian and Prince, you know, those guys, at that moment of their career, probably where I'm at, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, they were like in the 15, 16 years. And, you know, when you've been through a lot, uh, you know, it's only one month. It's like, you know, as a team individually, you don't panic in April. If you panic in April, you got an issue, you know, <laughs> you don't trust in yourself and, you know, what you're capable of doing. So I think that that year we were very confident that, you know, you know, as a team, you're going to go through funks. and. I mean, everything went to funk in that first month, so we knew that, you know, as soon as everything get back in track, we were going to start winning because you have it. When you have a good team, you know you're going to win uh, on a daily basis. So, I mean, it's, it's the same mentality. That's what I'm trying to tell the guys. Like, yeah, like, we, we are literally playing our worst, and we literally play top five teams in the whole league right now. And for the majority of the game, we compete. There was only a few ones that kind of get out of the way, but, like, all of them, we were competing to the ninth inning. So that tells you how good of a team we are that even that we are struggling as a team we were still competing those guys are really hot so he just I, you know that was my message just stick to the good things you know stick to the you know we we fighting till the last out and we are playing the worst that we're going to play this year so it just gave you a lot of hope when you stay positive and and believe that as soon as you know a few tweak go our way and, and a few guys get start getting hot you know winning streaks are you know around the corner so i mean I mean, I, I feel as a team, we got it. And I mean, that last uh, game against Tampa was huge. I think it was very huge for us to let us, you know, let us know that we are going to win, that it's not going to happen easily. Nobody's going to hand off wins and losses. So, you know, we have to earn it. When you talk to the guys, 
How does that come about? Is it after a game? Is it during a game? Do you see someone's mood who needs to see the positivity? How do you do that? Yeah, it's a pain. I, 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 did, I did have a talk. I think it was the, that game, actually, before the game, we always have meetings. And I, you know, I don't really like to talk too much. I'd rather go in individually to a player. Uh, but I did talk. I did want to just, you know, share that we have to learn, like, to be a big leaguer and to play this game for a long time, you need to be able to turn the page. You cannot start thinking about how we're playing two weeks ago or like, oh, last series was bad. Like now, like, if you want to be successful, you want to stay and, I mean, have hent uh, mental health, you need to be able to turn the page, have short memory, stick to the good things that you're doing, delete the bad thing. I know it's hard, but that's just the best way of stay mental uh in a good shape and like as a team also you know i think when you when you worry so much about what's going wrong you're not seeing the possibilities and, and the good things they're really ahead of the you know right right around the uh the corner so that was my message and i feel that you know it kind of put a little bit things in perspective uh i feel that we all gonna go through problems it's up to you if you want to make it small and disappear or make it huge and live with it so I think I was just, you know, just trying to put that perspective in their head because that's who I am. Like, I know I'm not hitting the way I'm going to hit, but it doesn't matter that I'm not going to change my mentality and what I think I am as a player every single day. So it's just something that I learned from guys that I've played in the past, and I'm trying to just, you know, share that information with them. Yeah, that makes sense because you could see how easy it would be. Forget about the team. I know team is first, but for yourself individually, if you're having a bad season, I can see why that would get to you. Yeah. But from your experience, now when did you, how did you learn that? Because that's a tool that not too many players have up here. Yeah, I think that I'm, I'm, I never think about myself. Sometimes even my brother always get mad at me. Say, you gotta think about you first. <laughs> <laughs> but my whole career always, is all my, my, my mindset, all, all the, the energy that I put, all, all my talks are around the team too. I, I always wanna, have a good environment. I think that's the number one thing for me. Like I wanna, I want, I wanna be at home and, and start, you know, what, you know, watching on my watch. I need to go to the ballpark. I wanna be with my teammates. I need to be around the clubhouse. Like that's for me what it still make me, you know, wanna compete. So it's just something that who I am. I love. I love making my, you know, people around me comfortable and happy and like I feel, you know. What we show out here as a product is, 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 a, is a reflection of what it is in the clubhouse. So I feel that, you know, always, that's always been my job, I think, uh, keeping everybody happy, keeping everybody loose, and, and just put everybody in a good mindset to go and compete every day. So I know when Luis Robert had the issue a couple of days ago with his hamstring and he didn't want to tell the coaches, the trainers, because he wanted to play. And he ended up going to you, and I think he told Eloy as well, what, what did you think about how he handled that? I see where he's coming from because he wants to play, but he probably could have handled it a little bit better. But what do you think? Yeah, no, we did have a conversation about it. He, he mentioned it to me like right before the game, actually. And my first thing was, or my first uh, thought was, you talk to the manager. And he expressed, you know, if I tell him, they're going to probably bench me because, you know, I have history. Yeah. But I, you know, I told him, I say, look, you're young. Yeah, you have some injuries, but I've been through that. Like I've been the young guy. They, they want to taking care of you. Like nothing to happen. But well, you need to create that relationship where, like, you're telling the manager and the coaches, I'm good. Like I know myself. Like I'm not gonna get hurt, but I need a few days to chill out because he's an explosive player. So like, if he doesn't run like that, people are gonna think like, what happened? He don't want to play. But I mean, I, I knew that. It was something else. That kid loved baseball, man. Uh, Robert, he wants to be there every single day. So, you know, I think he has a conversation with with Pedro and the coaches. So, uh, you know, it was a kind of unfortunately the way it happened. But I tell him, I said, dude, I've been through way many worse things. What, what, what did you do that was worse? Oh, I, I dumped that. I, <laughs> I mean, I've been pulled out of the game, playing defense, like by not running. So I just tell him, like, you learn when you're young sometimes. It's not that you're afraid of your coaches, but I understand his part because I, I've never been a coach. I've never been a manager. So I've always put myself as a player, and I've done it. So I tell him, like, you know, yeah, like, it might bother people for a few days, but 
it's baseball, you know, it's life. You know, you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna learn. Uh, just, just learn about it and know, you know, trust. Trust your manager, trust that if you tell him that you need a few days not to go 100% so you can play, yeah. uh, he will trust you and he will let you, you know, play like that. So I think it's just uh, getting to know, I mean, we're still getting to know Pedro, he's getting to know us. So I think it's, a, you know, it's a process that when you're losing everything, you can see little, you know, all the little pieces, unfortunately, but it's just baseball. So I, I, I told him, I was like, it's baseball, man. Like, it's gonna happen. That's one probably, I hope it's not too many. I've been through a lot of craziness, you know, in the field, off the field. So I tell him, I was like, at the end, as long as you're honest and you communicate, yeah. they know you're a kid. They know we're gonna make, you know, you may, you're supposed to make dumb decisions when you're young, you know, so. <laughs> Uh, it just, it's normal, man. I think it's just baseball. But, I mean, we're family. We're going to take care of each other. And, you know, as family, you're going to have those, converse, those tough conversations. But it's just about, you know, keep learning about ourselves and, you know, get, you know, just keep growing as a team. So, going back to your 2015 Rangers, you guys ended up winning the division. You won 88 games despite that bad start. And you had a first-year manager in Jeff Bannister. So, uh, does it take a little bit of time for a coaching staff and a team to gel and create a winning, I don't want to say culture, but winning atmosphere because, you know, you guys were 81 and 81 last year and you needed to get it back and be on a kind of a, in a winning situation this year? A hundred percent, man. I mean, I mean, I, I think any time you're, it's your first time at something, it's, it's going to be extremely hard, especially when you have expectation of winning yeah. like we have this year. So. But I feel like, you know, he's been doing a tremendous job, you know, being himself, don't, don't, don't overact, don't, 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 you know, panicking type of stuff. He's been very, you know, still same guy since spin training. So, you know, I always as a player, I'm gonna always tell him my opinion and my point of view. Uh, he's his decision at the end, he's the, he's the boss here, but, you know, I always tell him that, like, you know, don't, you know, we're gonna go out of this. Like we're gonna get out of this punk, and he, more than us, he believed that also. So, so you tell him that. Well, I mention it sometimes. Like we're gonna get out of here, and we start talking. Like I think like a week ago about that. Like 2015, Texas, where like you guys were like that with a first year manager. Like we have that conversation, and you know he kind of asked me a little bit. I was like, yeah, man. And I told him I said I do remember from Bannister, he never changed. That first horrible month which a lot of people will probably react and panic, he did not. And like, I feel like as a player, when you see the manager and the coach and not panicking, not reacting to it, it gives you like, okay, we got it. Like, okay, they, they seen something that we're not seeing right now as a team, but I know he's there. And, and we were talented as this team is. And, and, you know, in May, after we hit May, we start winning some games, everybody relax and everything fall back in track. So I feel that's what's gonna happen this year because we have, too much of a team here to go the other way. So uh, hopefully we end up that way and you know we end up in the playoff and then we'll see after that. I can't wait to look back at this interview in October really? when you guys had this record and you got out of the muck and you <laughs> won the division or made the playoffs. That's certainly what I'm hoping for. There's one other thing. We've noticed the jacket and the fedora hat with the home runs. All right. So Jake says you started this. Did you begin this, or how did this all come about? Well, uh, we need something. I think stuff like that glue the team together. Uh, especially when you see the jacket, you want to hit a homer. So I, believe me, I was kind of, it wasn't 100% my idea. I was one of the first guys that mentioned it, and I haven't hit a homer this year. So I'm craving for a homer. <laughs> uh, I'm putting that jacket yeah. one of these days for sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that it's always, uh, it's always great when you have interaction. I think stuff like that, you know, it brings the swagger back. Yeah, you see it and consciously, uh, unconsciously, you, you think about it. It's like, okay, I need to do my part. I, I wanna be part of that. I wanna like, you know, come and talk yeah. to the camera at the end of the dugout. So it's just stuff like that, you know, like stuff we do in the bases and just having fun here. All those stuff, even the people don't see it, it makes the team relax. And when you relax and you're talented, great things are gonna happen. So I think that's, that's for me always been, always trying to find stuff like that. Stuff here in the clubhouse to make everybody be part, you know, be one uh, as a team. And, and 
I mean, since we have the Jag, a lot of guys start hitting homers, so I can't wait to put myself in the list. So are you going for like a Chicago mobster thing there? Yes, yes. So we Google it. We Google it for like an hour, okay? What is, you know, what are the things? The like Windy City, is a yeah. pizza, is it like Italian, and then we find out mobster, yeah. you know, star here. So I was like, okay, come on. You know, everybody's doing something different. We have to bring, you know, we, we're gangsters here. And that's our mindset. We're going to go out there and fight. We're going to fight nobody who's in the other side. We don't really care. So uh, it was a really good, you know, he shows. And we, we kind of show in pride, you know, from being, you know, here in Chicago and having pride for the city and, and giving back to the city. So it's just, it's a win-win situation, you know. I got a nickname for you guys. What you got? Call yourselves the Mob Squad. <laughs> I like it, man. I like it. It's gonna go. You have to go that way this yeah, year for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. You guys gotta be gangsters to get we out of this. Have to. We have to gangs <laughs> all the way to the top, baby. That's that's how they did it, and that's what we're gonna do. All right, Elvis Andrews. Thank you so much for your time. Thank and that you. is a wrap for this edition of the White Sox Talk podcast, brought to you by Wintrust, your home for White Sox. Check in with free ATMs nationwide. Go to the special White Sox webpage, www.wintrust.com/sox. Hawk Harrelson, take it away. Thanks, our Chuck. And this edition of the White Sox Talk Podcast is over.